Once again, I welcome you today. We're going to listen to a talk by Walter Williger from University of Wisconsin. In this talk, he'll talk about Leonard pairs and spin models and how these things relate to the theory of distance regular graphs. And he'll give a condition for the graph affording a spin model. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted to be here and bless you all for showing up. This talk is going to be about Leonard pairs, spin models, and distance regular graphs. Now, the work of Kaufman, Curtin, Nomura, and Wolf shows that a distance regular graph gamma that affords a spin model, for that graph, the irreducible modules for all the subconstituent algebras take a certain form. And we're going to show that the converse is true. Whenever all the irreducible modules for all the subconstituent algebras of gamma take this form, then gamma affords a spin model. And we're going to explicitly construct this spin model when gamma has q raka type. Now, our results rely heavily on the theory of spin Leonard pairs. And the first half of this talk is going to be about that theory. This is all joint work with Kazumasa Nomura. And I should say the, the big message in all of this is that the theory of spin models at an algebraic level is captured inside the theory of Leonard pairs, the so-called spin Leonard pairs. Okay, now we're, we're the first to admit we have not discovered any new spin model to date. What we have shown is that a new spin model would result from the discovery of a new distance regular graph with the right sort of irreducible modules for its subconstituent algebras. Okay, now in this colloquium style talk, I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to be discussing a type of square matrix said to be tridiagonal. The two matrices you see there are tridiagonal. Tridiagonal means each non-zero entry lies on either the diagonal, the subdiagonal, or the superdiagonal. Now that tridiagonal matrix on the left is irreducible. And this means that each entry on the subdiagonal is non-zero, and each entry on the superdiagonal is non-zero. Now, the following conventions will be used throughout the talk. F is a field. Every vector space discussed is understood to be over F. Every algebra discussed is understood to be associative over F and have a multiplicative identity. We'll fix an integer d, at least 0, and let mat d plus 1 f denote the algebra consisting of the d plus 1 by d plus 1 matrices that have all entries in f. And we'll index the rows and columns by 0, 1, up to d. OK, now let's consider an irreducible tridiagonal matrix in mat. Call it t. There it is. a i is on the diagonal. B i's on the superdiagonal and C i's on the subdiagonal. Let's recall that the eigenvalues of T are the roots of the characteristic polynomial of T, of course. Now, this characteristic polynomial can be computed as follows. Let lambda denote an indeterminate, and let F brackets lambda denote the algebra consisting of the polynomials in lambda that have all coefficients in F. Now, I'll define some polynomials pi, i0 to d plus 1, in f lambda such that p0 is 1, p1 is lambda minus a0, and lambda pi is pi plus 1 plus a i pi plus pi minus 1 ci pi minus 1 for i1 to d. So the polynomial pi is monic with degree i for i0 to d plus 1. 
it's well known that PD plus one is the characteristic polynomial of T. And we'll call that sequence PI the monic polynomial sequence or MPS for T. Okay, now let's, um, let's recall some linear algebra for later use. Let V denote a vector space with dimension D plus one. And let NV denote the algebra consisting of the F linear maps from V to V. And recall that each basis of V gives an algebra isomorphism from NV to mat. And this isomorphism is described as follows. Let VI, I0 to D, denote a basis for V. For A and NV and M and mat, we'll say that M represents A with respect to the VI basis. Whenever for J0 to D, A applied to VJ is the sum over I0 to M, I D, M, I, J, V, I. Okay, then the isomorphism sends each element A and NV to the unique matrix in MAT that represents A with respect to the VI basis. Okay, now I'll define a Leonard pair. A Leonard pair on V is an ordered pair A, A star of elements in NV such that there exists a basis for V with respect to which the matrix representing A is irreducible tridiagonal and the matrix representing A star is diagonal. And there exists a basis for V with respect to which the matrix representing A star is irreducible tridiagonal and the matrix representing A is diagonal. So in a nutshell, for a Leonard pair A A star on V, we've got two bases, basis one and basis two. And in basis one, A is irreducible tridiagonal and, in, and A star is diagonal. And in basis two, it's the other way around. Okay, now in the previous slide, we saw two irreducible tridiagonal matrices and each comes with its own MPS. Now those two MPSs are related by some equations called the ASCII-Wilson duality. And I'll give the details on the next slide. Okay, so for a Leonard pair A, A star on B, returning to that table, uh, in basis one, uh, A is represented by a tri irreducible tridiagonal matrix T, and A star is represented by a diagonal matrix, the diagonal entries let's call A, theta naught star, theta one star up to theta D star. And in basis two, it's the other way around, A is represented by a diagonal matrix theta naught, theta one up to theta D, and uh, A star is represented by an irreducible tridiagonal matrix T star. All right, now let PI, I zero to D, be the uh, MPS for T and let the PI stars denote the MPS for T star. Okay, then those two MPSs are related as follows. First of all, for I zero to D, PI if theta naught is non-zero and PI star if theta naught star is non-zero. And for I and J zero to D, PI of theta J divided by PI of theta naught is equal to PJ star of theta I star divided by PJ star of theta naught star. Okay, those equations together are referred to as ASCII-Wilson duality. Okay, now in 1982, Doug Leonard classified all the pairs of MPS that satisfy ASCII-Wilson duality. And a more general classification was given in 1985 by Benayan Ito. The MPS that show up in the solutions are listed here. Q Raka family, Q Han, dual Q Han, Q Krauchik, dual Q Krauchik, quantum Q Krauchik, affine Q Krauchik, Raka Han, dual Han, Krauchik, and the Benai Ito polynomials. So those polynomials together make up the so-called terminating branch of the ASCII scheme of orthogonal polynomials. Now we invented the notion of a Leonard pair in order to clarify and simplify Leonard's theorem. Replacing the polynomials by a pair of linear transformations provides a basis-free approach that we find illuminating. And for more information, see my paper, An Algebraic Approach 
to the ASCII scheme of orthogonal polynomials. Now we're going to be discussing a type of Leonard pair said to be self-dual. What does this mean? For an algebra A, an automorphism of A is an algebra isomorphism from A to A. Now let AA star denote a Leonard pair on B. This Leonard pair is said to be self-dual whenever there exists an automorphism sigma of NV that swaps the A and the A star. And in this case, the sigma is unique and it's an involution. And we'll call that sigma the duality of AA star. Now, when working with a Leonard pair, it's convenient to consider a closely related object called a Leonard system. Now, before I define a Leonard system, let's recall a few concepts from linear algebra. For A and NV, we'll say that A is diagonalizable whenever V is spanned by the eigenspaces of A. And we'll say that A is multiplicity free whenever A is diagonalizable and each eigenspace of A has dimension one. Now assume that A is multiplicity free and let VI, I zero to D, denote an ordering of the eigenspaces of A. And for I zero to D, define EI and NV that acts as the identity on VI and as zero on VJ for J not equal to I. Then EI is the projection from V onto VI. And we'll call EI the primitive idempotent of A for VI. Now let brackets A denote the subalgebra of NV generated by A. And then by construction, the powers of A, A to the I, I zero to D, form a basis for the vector space brackets A, and also the primitive idempotents, the EIs, I zero to D, form another basis for that space. Okay, now let AA star denote a Leonard pair on B. It's known that A and A star are multiplicity free. Let EI, I zero to D, denote an ordering of the primitive idempotents of A. And for I zero to D, pick a non-zero vector VI in EIV then those VIs form a basis for V. The ordering EI is said to be standard whenever the matrix representing A star with respect to that VI basis is irreducible tridiagonal. And if the ordering EI is standard, then the inverted ordering ED minus I is also standard and no further ordering is standard. A standard ordering of the primitive idempotents for A star is similarly defined. By a Leonard system on V, I mean a sequence phi consisting of an A, uh, E naught through E D, an A star, an E naught star through E D star, involving elements in NV, such that A A star is a Leonard pair on V. The E I's form a standard ordering of the primitive idempotents of A, and the E I stars form a standard ordering of the primitive idempotents for A star. Now, until further notice, fix a Leonard system on V. Okay, phi, there it is. Note that each of the following is also a Leonard system on V. Phi, phi star, in which we interchange the roles of A and A star. Okay, phi down arrow, in which we invert the ordering on the EI stars. Phi double down arrow, in which we invert the ordering on the EIs. And another adjustment we can make is this. Bring in scalars alpha, beta, alpha star, beta star with alpha, alpha star non-zero and replace the A by alpha A plus beta I and replace the A star by alpha star, A star plus beta star I and leave the EIs and EI stars alone. And then we'll get another Leonard system on V. Okay, now referring to our Leonard system phi. For any object omega associated with phi, let omega star denote the corresponding object for phi star. Okay, now referring to our Leonard system phi. For i zero to d, let theta i denote the eigenvalue of a corresponding to the primitive idempotent ei. 
and let theta i star denote the eigenvalue of a star for the primitive idempotent e i star. We'll call the theta i sequence the eigenvalue sequence of phi, and the theta i star sequence we'll call the dual eigenvalue sequence of phi. Okay, now I'm going to define a phi standard basis for V. Pick a non-zero vector U in E naught V. Then it turns out the vectors E I star U, I zero to D, form a basis for V said to be phi standard. And with respect to this basis, the matrix representing A is irreducible tridiagonal, and the matrix representing A star is diagonal with ith ith entry theta i star for i zero to d. Okay, so with respect to a phi standard basis for V, the matrices representing A and A star have the form you see there for A, a tridiagonal matrix with the, uh, uh, on the diagonal, some AI scalars, on the super diagonal, some BIs, and on the sub diagonal, some CIs. And for A star, it's diagonal with diagonal entries, theta naught star, theta one star down to theta D star. Okay, now by the construction that matrix representing A has constant rho sum theta naught. So for I zero to D, CI plus AI plus BI is equal to theta naught. Okay, now earlier I defined the phi standard basis for V. Next, I'm going to define the phi split basis for V. The following notation will be useful. For I zero to D plus one, define polynomials tau I and eta I in F lambda. By tau I is the product lambda minus theta naught, lambda minus theta one, et cetera, down to lambda minus theta I minus one for a total of I factors and eta i is similar where we come in from the other end, lambda minus theta d, lambda minus theta d minus one, et cetera. So each of tau i and eta i is monic with degree i for i zero to d plus one. Okay, now for a non-zero vector u in e naught star v, the vectors tau i of a u, i zero to d, form a basis for v said to be phi split. And with respect to this basis, the matrices representing A and A star are as you see there. For A on the diagonal, we see theta naught, theta one, theta two, down to theta D. On the subdiagonal, all ones and everywhere else zero, I would call that matrix lower by diagonal. And for A star on the diagonal, theta naught star, theta one star, down to theta D star, on the super diagonal, some scalars th phi one, phi two, up down to phi d, and everywhere else zero, I'd call that an upper bidiagonal matrix. Those phi i's are non-zero scalars. <clears throat> okay, now that sequence phi i, i one to d, is called the first split sequence of phi. Now let phi i, i one to d with a different font, uh, denote the first split sequence for the phi double down arrow lettered system. So we'll call that uh, alternate split uh, phi sequence the second split sequence of phi. And by the parameter array of phi, I mean the sequence cons consisting of the eigenvalue sequence, the theta i's, these dual eigenvalue sequence, the theta i stars, and then the first split sequence and second split sequence. Okay, then it turns out that a Leonard system phi is uniquely determined up to isomorphism by its parameter array. So we would expect the CI and VI uh, intersection numbers to be writable in terms of the parameter array, and this lemma at the bottom shows how to do it. CI is equal to uh, phi i times this ratio involving the polynomial uh, evaluated at theta i star, theta i minus one star and something similar for the BI. Okay, now earlier we defined duality for Leonard pairs. I'm now gonna define duality for Leonard systems. So the Leonard system phi is said to be self-dual. 
whenever there exists an automorphism sigma of NB that swaps the A and the A star and also swaps the EI, EI star for I0 to D. In this case, sigma is unique and an involution and we'll call sigma the duality of phi. Then it turns out that the Leonard system phi is self-dual if and only if theta i is equal to theta i star for i zero to d. And in this case, uh, in, the, in the second split sequence, phi i is equal to phi d minus i plus one for i one to d. Okay, now we come to the classification of Leonard systems. It goes like this, given, given a sequence of scalars, theta i, theta i star, first phi i, second phi i, call that list star then there exists a Leonard system V over F with parameter array star, if and only if the following conditions hold. So firstly, the thetas are mutually distinct, the theta stars are mutually distinct. Secondly, the, uh, the first type of phi i, the second type of phi i are non-zero. Thirdly, the first type of phi i is equal to the second phi one times a certain sum involving the eigenvalues plus a product theta i star minus theta naught star, theta i minus one minus theta d. And the fourth condition is similar. The second type of phi i is equal to the first phi one times that same sum, plus the product theta i star minus theta naught star, theta d minus i plus one minus theta naught. And lastly, the ratios you see there, theta i minus two minus theta i plus one divided by theta i minus one minus theta i, and the star version, those are all equal and independent of i for two, i two to d minus one. And if all those conditions hold, then the corresponding uh, Leonard system phi is unique up to isomorphism. Okay, now on the previous slide, I gave many conditions on a parameter array. And the most general solution is called q Rocca and described as follows. Start with non-zero scalars, A, B, C, and Q, such that Q to the fourth is not equal to one, and we got these conditions. Q to the two I is not equal to one for I one to D. Neither of A squared nor B squared is among the bad values you see there. Q to the two D minus two, Q to the two D minus four, et cetera, down to Q to the two minus two D. And lastly, none of the products A, B, C, A inverse B, C, A, B inverse C, A, B, C inverse are among the bad values you see at the bottom, Q to the D minus one, Q to the D minus three, et cetera, down to Q to the one minus D. Okay, and now for I zero to D, define theta I to be A Q to the two I minus D plus A inverse Q to the D minus two I theta i star similar, equaling b q to the two i minus d plus b inverse q to the d minus two i. And for i one to d, define the first phi i and the second phi i to be as shown there, basically a product of four big factors. Okay, then it turns out that the sequence involving the theta i's, theta i's, first phi i, second phi i, is a parameter A of a Leonard system P over F said to have Q Rocca type. And that four tuple uh, of values A, B, C, Q is called the Huang data for phi. That's after Hao and Huang. And it turns out that the Leonard system phi is self-dual if and only if A is equal to B. Okay, now let's return our attention to an arbitrary Leonard system on V. Okay, there it is, phi, A, E, I, A star, E, I star. Our next goal is to define some elements A, I, I zero to D, that form a basis for the vector space brackets A. And we'll call those A, I's the, the pseudo distance matrices of phi. Now to define these matrices, uh, we'll first uh, introduce a certain bijection, I'll call it rho from brackets A to brackets A star. Now this bijection row, it's F linear, but not an algebra homomorphism. It goes like this. There exists a unique F linear map row from brackets A to brackets A star, 
such that for any element y in brackets a, the product y e naught star e naught is equal to rho applied to y times e naught. So that map rho turns out to be a bijection. Now, in order to describe the inverse of rho, I'm going to introduce a scalar nu. Now, nu satisfies these equations. Nu times e naught, e naught star e naught is equal to e naught. And also, nu times e naught star e naught, e naught star is equal to e naught star. Nu is equal to nu star. Nu is non-zero, and its inverse is the trace of the product e naught, e naught star. It turns out that nu is uh, given by this ratio the, uh, in the numerator, the polynomials a, a to d applied to theta naught and uh, times the dual, and in the denominator, the product of all the terms in the second split sequence. Okay, that nu I'll call the pseudo size of, of phi, and the, and the naming will become apparent a little bit later on. Anyway, it turns out that the inverse of rho is equal to nu times rho star. Okay, now for i is here to d, define ai to be the element in brackets a that is the rho preimage of ei star. We'll call ai the ith pseudo distance matrix of phi. So by the construction, rho sends ai to ei star and it also sends ei to new inverse ai star for i zero to d. Okay, so to, to sum up, for i zero to d, ai e naught star e naught is equal to ei star e naught, and ei e naught star e naught is equal to new inverse ai star e naught. Then we have the dual equations. Okay, it turns out that the elements ai form a basis for the vector space brackets a, a naught is equal to the identity, and the sum of the ai's is equal to nu times e naught. a is related to a1 in the following way. If assuming the d is at least one, a is equal to c1 a1 plus a naught times the identity. Okay, now I'm gonna define some scalars ki, i zero to d. For i zero to d, define ki, the scalar ki, to be the eigenvalue of ai associated with the primitive item point e naught. In other words, ai e naught is ki e naught. We'll call ki the ith pseudo valency of phi. And it turns out that k naught is equal to one the sum of the ki's is equal to nu. For i zero to d, ki is this familiar uh, ratio, b naught, b one up to bi minus one, divided by c one, c two up to ci. And, uh, and the ki's in terms of the, uh, the parameter a are given at the bottom there. Okay, next I'm gonna define some scalars phij. Since the AIs form a basis for brackets A, there exists some scalars P, H, I, J, such that for I and J zero to D, AI times AJ is the sum over H zero to D, P, H, I, J, A, H. We'll call those scalars P, H, I, J the pseudo intersection numbers of phi. Now, for no notational convenience, define QHIJ to be the dual of PHIJ. So by construction, for I and J zero to D, AI star times AJ star is the sum over H zero to D, QHIJ, AH star. So we'll call those scalars QHIJ the pseudo crine parameters of phi. Okay, next I'm gonna define a, or describe a type of Leonard pair said to have spin. The notion of a spin Leonard pair was introduced by Brian Curtin in 2007. 
it goes like this. Let, let A A star denote a lettered pair on B. And bring in an invertible element W of brackets A and an invertible W star in brackets A star. Then it turns out the following are equivalent. W A star W inverse is equal to W star inverse A W star and W inverse A star W is equal to W star A W star inverse and W star W A star is equal to A W star W and A star W W star is equal to W W star A. Now let A A star denote a Leonard pair on V. A Boltzmann pair for A A star is an ordered pair W W star such that W is an invertible element in brackets A W star is an invertible element in brackets A star, and the W W star satisfy the four equivalent conditions in the previous lemma. That Leonard pair A star is said to have spin whenever there exists a Boltzmann pair for A A star. Now in 2007, Brian Curtin classified up to isomorphism the spin Leonard pairs and he described their Boltzmann pairs. Now until further notice, let A A star denote a spin Leonard pair on B with Boltzmann pair W W star. Okay, then it turns out for non-zero scalars alpha alpha star, the pair alpha W alpha star W star is another Boltzmann pair for A A star. And also the pair of inverses W inverse W star inverse is a Boltzmann pair for A A star. Now let's investigate the products W W star W and W star W W star. Okay, it turns out that A times W W star W is equal to W W star W times A star and also A star W W star W is equal to W W star W A. And then dually A W star W W star is equal to W star W W star A star. And A star W star W W star is equal to W star W W star A. And the upshot of all that is that the following agree up to a non-zero scalar factor W, W star W and W star W, W star. Those are equal up to a non-zero scalar factor. Now using W and W star, we can obtain an action of the modular group PSL2Z on NV as a group of automorphisms. Now recall that PSL2Z is a, has a presentation by generators psi and sigma such that psi, is, psi cubed is equal to one and sigma squared is equal to one. And according to uh, Brian Curtin, the group PSL2Z acts on NV such that the psi sends any element y to y conjugated by WW star and sigma sends that y to y conjugated by WW star W or we could just as well have taken W star WW star. Okay, and a consequence of that is that a spin Leonard pair A A star is self dual with duality sigma. Okay, now our Boltzmann pair W W star is said to be balanced whenever W W star W is equal to W star W W star. If it's not balanced, then we can balance it by multiplying one of the W W star by an appropriate non zero scalar. Until further notice, let's assume that W W star is balanced. So by construction, the duality sigma swaps the W and the W star. Now let EI denote a standard ordering of the primitive idempotence of A. And for I zero to D, define EI star to be the image of the EI under sigma. 
And then by construction, the sequence phi consisting of the A, the EIs, the A star, and the EI stars, that is a self-dual Leonard system on V with duality sigma. Now, since the EIs form a basis for brackets A and W is an invertible element in brackets A, there exists non-zero scalars F and TI, I zero to D, such that T naught is one and W is equal to the product of F and the sum of our I zero to D, TI, EI. And applying the duality sigma, we obtain that W star is F times the sum over I zero to D, TI, EI star. That scalar F is free. It can be adjusted to have any non-zero value. Okay, it's not particularly important. It's the TIs that are uh, truly important. Now, let's recall those bijections, the row from brackets A to brackets A star, and row star from brackets A star back to brackets A. Next, let's find the action of rho on W and its inverse, and rho star on, on W star and its inverse. For notational convenience, let me define a, a scalar gamma, which is that new inverse times the sum over i, zero to d, k, i, t, i. Okay, then it turns out that the bijection rho sends W to a scalar multiple of W star inverse, the scalar being F squared gamma, and it also sends W inverse to a scalar multiple of W star, the scalar being F to the minus two gamma inverse nu inverse. And let me point out, this is slightly remarkable because that rho is not an algebra isomorphism. Um, just because it, Rho sends W to something nice, doesn't mean it sends W inverse to anything approaching the inverse of that thing, but in this case it does. Okay, and similar for Rho star, Rho star sends W star to a scalar multiple of W inverse, and it sends W star inverse to a scalar multiple of W. Okay, now recall that basis AI, I zero to D for brackets A, and the basis AI star for brackets A star. Next, let's express the W and its inverse in the basis AI and W star and its inverse in the basis AI star. Okay, so it turns out that W is equal to, up to a scalar, the sum over I zero to D TI inverse AI. And W inverse is equal to, up to a scalar, the sum over I zero to D TI AI and then something similar for W star and W star inverse. Okay, now let's return our attention to an arbitrary Leonard system on V. Phi, there it is. And until further notice, let's assume that Phi has Q Raka type with Huang data A, B, C, Q. Let's consider the very special case where A equals B equals C. So under that assumption, define W to be a scalar F times the sum over I zero to D TI EI, and define W star to be F times the sum over I TI EI star, where the F is arbitrary non-zero, and TI is minus one to the I, A to the minus I, Q to the I D minus I for I zero to D. Okay, then it turns out that the pair W, W star, it's a Boltzmann pair for A, A star. Still assuming that A equals B equals C, the, uh, those B I's and C I's are given by the formulas you see there. Okay, fairly nice formulas involving the, that parameter A and the Q. Okay, now we're, we're done discussing Leonard pairs and Leonard systems. Let's now consider spin models. So from now on, let the field F be the complex numbers. All right, now let X be a non-empty finite set. And let mat XC denote the algebra consisting of the matrices that have rows and columns indexed by X and all entries in C. For R and mat X, 
and vertices x and y, the xy entry of r will be denoted by r parentheses xy. Now let v denote the vector space over c consisting of the column vectors whose entries are indexed by x. And that algebra mat acts on v by left multiplication. Okay, now a matrix W in MAT is said to have type two whenever W is symmetric with all entries non-zero and that equation that you see there holds. The meaning of that equation is that the Hadamard inverse of W, the entry-wise inverse of W, is a scalar multiple of the ordinary inverse of W, that scalar being the size of X, cardinality of X. Now let me remind you about the Nomura algebra of type two matrix. Assume that a matrix W in MAT is type two. For vertices B and C, define a vector U, U sub B C in V that has Y entry uh, equal to the ratio of the B Y entry of W divided by the C Y entry of W for every vertex Y and further define N of W to be the set consisting of the matrices B and MAT that are symmetric and have the property that UBC is an eigenvector for B for all vertices B and C. Okay, then according to Nomura, assuming W and MAT is type two, then N of W is a commutative subalgebra of MAT that contains the all ones matrix J and is closed under the Hadamard product. We will call N of W the Nomura algebra of W. Now for a real number alpha, let alpha to the one half be the positive square root of alpha. And according to Vaughn Jones, a matrix W in MAT is called a spin model whenever it's, it is type two and it satisfies this uh, complicated um, looking sum that you see there. Now that, that complicated looking sum can be expressed as follows. For vertex X, define a diagonal matrix W star, W star of X in MAT, that has diagonal entries, the Y Y entry of W star is equal to uh, the square root of the size of X divided by the XY entry of W for every vertex Y. So that complicated looking sum is asserting that for every vertex X, W, W star, W is equal to W star, W, W star, where the W star is the W star associated with X. Okay, that observation is due to uh, Akihira Kumunamasa. He told me that in 1994. Okay, very insightful. <clears throat> now, according to Nomura, assuming that W is a spin model, then W is contained in N of W, its own Nomura algebra. Let's look at some examples of type two matrices and spin models. A matrix H is called Hadamard whenever every entry is plus or minus one and the product of H and its transpose is the size of X times the identity. For example, the matrix H that you see at the bottom there, that four by four is Hadamard. Now it turns out that a symmetric Hadamard matrix is type two. And more generally for any W in MAT and any non-zero scalar alpha, the following are equivalent. W is type two with all entries plus or minus alpha, and there exists a symmetric Hadamard matrix H, such that W is equal to alpha H. Now a type two matrix W will, is said to have Hadamard type whenever W is a scalar multiple of a symmetric Hadamard matrix. Okay, let's briefly consider spin models of Hadamard type. So I recall our example H of a Hadamard matrix. Then the square root of minus one times H is a spin model of Hadamard type. 
Now, sometimes Hadamard matrices, sometimes spin models of Hadamard type cause technical problems. So occasionally we'll assume that a spin model under discussion does not have Hadamard type. Okay, now let's bring in distance regular graphs. I'll assume that the audience is familiar with the basic concepts and notation for this topic. A good reference is the book by Brower, Cohen, and Neumeyer, Distance Regular Graphs. Now let gamma denote a distance regular graph with vertex at x, path length distance function partial, and diameter d at least three. And recall that the distance matrices, ai, i0 to d of gamma, form a basis for the Bose-Mesner algebra m of gamma. And let's assume that M contains a spin model, W. We'll say that gamma affords W whenever W is contained in M and M is contained in the Nomura algebra of W. Now, until further notice, assume that the spin model W is afforded by gamma. And let's consider the consequences. Okay, first, according to Curtin and Nomura, there exists an ordering EI of the primitive idempotence of M with respect to which gamma is formally self-dual. And for this ordering, the intersection numbers and crime parameters satisfy PHIJ is equal to QHIJ. Now, since the EIs form a basis for M and W is an invertible element in M, there exists a non-zero scalar F and non-zero scalars TI I zero to D such that T naught is one and W is equal to F times the sum over I T I E I. Now it turns out for combinatorial reasons that that scalar F satisfies F to the minus two is equal to the size of X to the minus three halves times the sum over I K I T I, where those K I's are the valencies of gamma. That equation, I'll, I'll call the standard normalization. I'll refer back to that later, standard normalization. Okay, now let's bring in the Bose Mesner, the dual Bose Mesner algebra. So until further notice, fix a vertex X. And for I zero to D, let EI star, EI star of X, denote the diagonal matrix in math that has Y, Y entry one, if X, the distance from X to Y is I, and zero otherwise. So by construction, the product of EI star and EJ star is zero if I is not equal to J and it's equal to EI star if I is equal to J. Also, the sum of the EI stars is the identity. So consequently, the EI stars form a basis for a commutative subalgebra M star, M star of X of mad X called the dual Bose-Mesner algebra of gamma with respect to X. Okay, and according to Curtin, the matrix W star, W star of X satisfies W star is equal to F times the sum of I, T, I, E, I star. Okay, next let's recall the dual distance matrices. For I zero to D, let A, I star, A, A, I star of X, denote the diagonal matrix in mat with Y, Y entry equal to the X, Y entry of E, I times the size of X. So A naught star is the identity, and for I and J zero to D, AI star times AJ star is the sum over H zero to D, QHIJ, AH star. Those matrices AI star form a basis for M star, and we'll call those AI stars the dual distance matrices of gamma with respect to X. Okay, now let's consider how W and W star are related. We mentioned earlier that W, W star, W is equal to W star, W, W star. And according to Kaufman and Wolf, W, A1 star, W inverse is equal to W star inverse, A1, W star. Well, we recognize those equations from our discussion about Boltzmann pairs. Now, let me bring in the subconstituent algebra. Let T, T of X, denote the subalgebra of mat generated by M and M star. That T is the subconstituent algebra of gamma with respect to X. Now that algebra T is semi-simple, so it's natural to consider the irreducible T modules. 
an irreducible T module U is called thin whenever the dimension of EI U and EI star U is at most one for I zero to D. Define the endpoint of U to be the minimum I for which EI star U is non-zero and the dual endpoint of U is the minimum I for which EI U is non-zero. Now, according to Curtin, each irreducible T module is thin, provided that W is not of Hadamard type. According to Curtin and Nomura, let U be a thin irreducible T module. Then the endpoint of U is equal to the dual endpoint of U. And according to Kaufman and Wolf, if U is a thin irreducible T module, then the pair A1, A1 star acts on U as a spin Leonard pair and WW star acts on U as a balanced Boltzmann pair for this Leonard pair. Now we've been discussing a distance regular graph that affords a spin model W. We showed that the existence of W implies that the irreducible T modules, uh, uh, subconstituent algebra take a certain form and we'll now reverse the logical direction. We show that whenever the irreducible modules for all the subconstituent al algebras of gamma take this form, then gamma affords a spin model W. Okay, now let gamma denote a distance regular graph with vertex at X and diameter D at least three. Let's assume that gamma is formally self-dual with respect to the ordering EI of the primitive item bones. Now let F and TI, I zero to D, denote non-zero scalars in C that, such that T naught is one. And define W to be the product of F times the sum over I, TI, EI. And for every vertex X, define W star of X to be F times the sum over I, TI, EI star of X. Okay, then it's a theorem according to Nomura and myself that if we assume that for all vertices X and all irreducible TX modules U, if U is thin, if U has the same endpoint and dual endpoint, if the pair A1, A1 star of X acts on U as a spin lettered pair, and W, W star of X acts on U as a balanced Boltzmann pair for this spin lettered pair, and if that scalar F satisfies that standard normalization equation, then W is in fact a spin model afforded by gamma. Okay, now I'm gonna make the previous theorem more explicit under the assumption that gamma has q raka type. Okay, assumption. Gamma is formally self-dual with respect to the ordering EI of the primitive item bones. Define some non-zero scalars, A and Q, uh, that, that satisfy these inequalities that you see at the bottom. Q to the 2i is not equal to 1 for i1 to d and so forth. For i0 to d, let theta i denote the eigenvalue of a1 associated with ei. And let's assume that theta i has the form you see there. Theta i is a scalar alpha times the uh, the expression a q to the 2i minus d plus a inverse q to the d minus 2i. Okay, plus beta, where the alpha and the beta are, as you see at the bottom there. These formulas are from the uh, Leonard's theorem of, uh, you know, the Leonard pairs of q raka type. We're just describing the distance regular graphs of q raka type. Okay, further assume that the intersection numbers, the bi and ci, are given by the formulas you see there. Again, this is the q raka type. Okay, assume further that for every vertex X and every irreducible TX module U, U is thin, U has the same endpoint and dual endpoint, let's call that endpoint R, and the intersection numbers CI of U and BI of U satisfy the, the formulas that you see there. Okay, that's uh, again, the q raka type. <coughs> I, I should I should say the spin type. So Q rock out with, with A B A equals B equals C. Okay, continued. 
Okay, so under all those assumptions, if we now define a matrix W to be the product of that F times the sum over I, zero to D, TI, EI, where the TI is minus one to the I, A to the minus I, Q to the I, D minus I for I zero to D, and F satisfies F squared is equal to the uh, size of X to the three halves times that product you see there, Okay, then in fact, W is a spin model afforded by gamma. Okay, so in summary, in this talk, I first described the spin Leonard pairs. I then considered a distance regular graph that affords a spin model. And using spin Leonard pairs, we showed that all the irreducible modules for all the subconstituent algebras of gamma take a certain form. We then reverse the logical direction. We assume that all the irreducible modules for all the subconstituent algebras of gamma take that form, and we argue that gamma affords a spin model. And we cons explicitly constructed this spin model when gamma has q rock out type. Thank you for your attention. Do we have any questions for Paul? I have a question. Actually, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, hi, Paul. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, my first question is um, for the known distance regular graphs that afford uh, spin models. Are they all of q type? Uh, um, the the, the q type, so in, in my talk, I'm assuming that the diameter is at least three. Mm -hmm. For for graphs with very small diameter, the complete graph, strongly regular graph, the notion of type doesn't quite apply because that Q is only well defined if if you know, the diameter is at least three. Okay. So it's a, it's not quite legit to uh, you know to dis, to discuss whether a strongly regular graph has Q rock type or not. Oh, 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 but uh, are there are uh, distance regular graphs that support uh, spin models, uh, and that's in uh, Brian and numerous paper. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, did are those like Kiraka type or the um, so there's the uh, the uh, so graphs, like the yeah. Hubbard there's a list in in my paper with number at the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a list of examples, right. mm -hmm. and. Um, I, it's not, it's not true that every spin model, you know, mm -hmm. co comes from a graph of Kiraka type, but it, it's, but it's almost, almost true. There's a long list of examples in the back of our paper. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, my second question is like, suppose someone finds a, a new distance regular graph of Kiraka type. Um, like, is there a way to check that it satisfies the equations? Uh, uh, like, that you have the if and only if condition, but they, they look kind of complicated to me. Okay, right. uh, yeah. Okay, so let's just review what, what would it take to find <laughs> yes. uh, a new spin model? So, mm -hmm. you, so you, you, you have to find a, uh, the right sort of distance regular graph. So, step one is to check if is it formally self dual or not. Okay, if it's not, forget it. Right. Okay, as long as it's formally self dual. Now look at the intersection numbers, the BIs and CIs, and see if they match the formulas that I gave in the talk. Mm -hmm. If they do, then that means that the, uh, the corresponding, uh, the so-called primary module uh, for the subconstituent algebra, I mean, the, the Leonard pair associated with that is of the right sort. It's, it's a spin Leonard pair of q Raka type. Okay. Okay, but now that's so things are heading in the right direction, but that's not the end of it. Right. That that just shows that the primary module for the subconstituent algebra is of the right sort. Right. Now we look at arbitrary irreducible modules for the subconstituent algebra. They also have to be of the right sort. Mm -hmm. And now um, it it's going to take a little calculation, um, but what you have to check is that each of those modules is thin. You have to check that for each of those modules, the endpoint is equal to the dual endpoint. Mm -hmm. 
And then you have to check that for each of those modules, the associated Leonard system is, is a spin Leonard system. In, in other words, the, the restriction of the adjacency matrix and the dual adjacency matrix to that module is a spin Leonard pair. You have to check. Uh, but um, but, you, but you, you can check that by just looking at the intersection numbers of that module. And you just have to check that they, um, you know, match the formulas that I showed in the talk. Okay, once, once uh, all of that checks out, then you define your matrix W to be that linear combination of the EIs that I showed. Right. And that matrix W will be a spin model afforded okay. by the graph. All right. Okay, so if I put this on my Christmas wish list and I would have to behave perfectly throughout the year, I don't have any hope of getting a spin model this way. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Paul. Yeah. That's right. So a long, a, a long conceptually, conceptually not, not complicated, very, very explicit what you have right. to find, what has to check out in order for that spin model to exist. Right. For it to work at the primary module, this is equivalent to the module invariance equation. Is that, is that correct? So that, that modular invariance equation, in my mind, it's a very complicated way to say that uh, those irreducible, <laughs> those, those le the lettered pairs that show up are spin lettered pairs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I guess I have a, a question that's kind of tangential. Very nice talk, by the way. I, I, impressive work. I think it's beautiful the way you could be so explicit about the structure of these things. Thank you. But why are those Boltzmann pairs called Boltzmann pairs? That's Boltzmann from statistical mechanics fame, but why so. is yeah. his name there? Uh, good question. I, okay. I I wish I could answer. I, when you get when you get back to the statistical mechanics level from which all this stuff originated, um, you, uh, I, I become lost. I don't I don't really know. You know, for me. Fair enough. That's I said it was tangential, so that's a fair answer. Yeah. So my understanding, you know, from my point of view, is this big black box called statistical mechanics. Some somehow in there emerged the these Boltzmann, <laughs> you know, parameters, the TIs and the W and so forth. Um, Jones, you know, used the W to um, create these spin models and explain the connection to the link invariance, et cetera. And, um, uh -huh. and then the, through the work of JJ and, and Benai and Nomura and um, Unamasa, uh, the connection to Bose-Mesner algebras and distance regular graphs became explicit and then and then I enter the game right okay. fair enough good thanks <laughs>